at me, he's like, um, yeah, we're on the wrong floor. Hey family, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna be telling y'all my labor and delivery story. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I'm so happy that you decided to join the family. And yeah, so I'm just gonna start from the beginning. So it was April 7th at um, sometime after 3 a.m. I had woke up to some really bad contractions and I couldn't go back to sleep. So um, when I had got up to use the bathroom, I noticed that some of my mucus plug was falling out. This wasn't the first time. Um, it happened before, but the doctor told me that it was okay because it always recreates itself. So this time, TMI, it was blood in it and I didn't know what was going on. So I told my mom, I had texted her and I told my husband and they both thought that I should call the doctor or whatever. So I called her. Well, no, before I called her, I tried to go back to the bed and my water was in the process of breaking. So, um, it's like every little step I took, water just trickled out of me. Like it didn't bust like a big old whoosh, you know, like the movies. It just was trickling out of me. When I finally got back to the bed, I called the doctor and she was like, yeah, it sounds like you're in labor. Go ahead and pack your bags because your water broke. Um, when your water breaks, you can't go back home. You can't stay home. You got to go to the hospital because you're about to have a baby. So, um... The bags were already packed, but we just double checked and made sure we had everything. Um, we headed to the hospital and luckily it was a gas station across from the hospital. I told my husband to go ahead and get his snacks because, you know, because of the coronavirus, um, they told me that only one person could come with me and that they couldn't leave under any circumstances or whatever. So, um... Yeah, he stopped by the gas station, got his snacks or whatever, and he pulled up to the emergency room. He parked in front, you know, in front of the doors, and I was trying to get out the car and walk to the front. It's so embarrassing, y'all, because I was struggling, for real. Like, even with my husband trying to help me, I was struggling. Um, and it wasn't even because of the contractions. It really was because the water kept trickling out of me. It literally felt like it's just falling out of me when it's really not supposed to literally that's how it felt like so um yeah each time more and more came um the security guards had yelled to me like hey you want me to bring you a wheelchair my husband like yes get her a wheelchair because you could tell that i was pregnant too so it's like they just started panicking <laughs> they grabbed the wheelchair or whatever they was looking like police officers though with that vest on i don't know why they had the vest on they had a vest on, they had masks on, gloves, they was prepared, okay? But um, they had brought me the wheelchair, and by the time I got in that wheelchair, y'all, I swear the bag just bust, like all the water was gone because I was so soaked, my legs were soaked, the car seat was soaked, like everything was just wet. So um, they rolled me inside, my husband went to go park the car, and they had asked me all the COVID questions. You know, have I been outside the U.S.? Um, have I been in contact with anybody with the coronavirus or whatever? All those questions, and I answered no to them. So then, um, they didn't give me a mask, though. I really wish they would have, but they only do. They only give them out to people who are um, who got symptoms of it or whatever. So I just tie. I just put my jacket over my nose. I did not want to get uh, infected. I didn't want to get. I didn't want no no problems. I don't want no problems. So, um, they had rolled me to my temporary room. Before I even got to the temporary room, y'all, they done rolled me to the wrong floor, for real. They put me to the dang on ICU floor. As soon as the elevators had, um, as soon as the elevator doors had opened, all I seen was this big blast. And some man, you know, God bless his soul, I hope that he okay. But he had all these tubes going inside him, a big tube in his mouth. Like, it was some movie type stuff. I never seen that before, except for on the movies. Like, so I had looked at him. He looked at me. He's like, um, yeah, we're on the wrong floor. I'm like, it's okay. In my head, I'm like, Lord, we starting off bad already. Like, so I just pray. I just kept it calm, kept it cool. You know, I just stayed positive. Um... So we had got to our floor and they had rolled me to my temporary room 
And then, I want to say not even two minutes after, my husband had came. So, um, when I got to my temporary room, they had drew my blood, took my urine, took my blood pressure, um, and what did they do? Oh, they asked me how far apart were my contractions, you know. I had this little um, app on my phone, this contraction timer app, and, you know, I showed her what was going on. She hooked me up to the machine, and then after that, she checked to see how far I was dilated. I was two centimeters, and from that point on, um, we really was just playing a waiting game. We had to wait until a permanent room was open because they were all filled. But um, luckily, some lady had her baby a day before me, so she was leaving the same day that I came anyways. And um, yeah, so I want to say it was about 5, five o'clock in the morning during all of that when we got to the hospital. So, um, at 1 p.m., that's when we got the call, you know, to get switched over to our new room or whatever. Um, and this is where I met Nurse B, you know, my new temporary nurse, because she was still my temporary nurse. Um, actually, nah, she Nurse A. I met Nurse A during the temporary room, too. I'm going to call her Nurse A. I didn't really like Nurse A. Um, nurse A was cool in the temporary room or whatever, but when we got to the primary room, um, I felt like she was just getting too comfortable and she was very loose with her words. It's like she just really didn't care. Also, she was saying how um, um, it was her first day back and she hasn't been to this hospital in a minute. Mind y'all, she was hooking up the wrong machines um she was asking a whole bunch of questions like you could just tell that she didn't really know what she was doing or she didn't remember what she was doing and it's just like when you go to a hospital you expect you know the nurses in them to know what they're doing you don't want to hear that they're just uncertain about certain stuff it just makes you uncomfortable like i just i didn't like that so um but during the whole time, like during all of that, I just stayed positive and I wasn't even thinking how I'm feeling about this situation now. I was really, you know, being cool about it. We got in the room and she checked me again. I was still two centimeters dilated. So she had um, gave me some medicine that will make me dilate faster. So um, she hooked up the bag. I got this. Um, dang, I wish I would have took some pictures. I really ain't had no storage. I deleted all my pictures uh literally after i had my baby but um yeah she had hooked the bag up or whatever and gave me a portable uh pole that the ivy bag and all the other bags could hang on to while i'm walking around and a portable contraction monitor so i got all of that i got hooked up and i walked around the halls with my husband to help me dilate um i want to say i walked around them halls three to four times i did lunges and um after a while, I came back, I couldn't do it because <laughs> the contractions was coming way too close and way too strong at the time. Um, I had to pee at the same time, and I felt it all down below in my groin area. It was just really uncomfortable. So, I got back to the room, and I used the bathroom. Um, when I used the bathroom, y'all, I had a contraction, and that contraction hurt it so bad. I felt like I was stuck on the toilet. Actually, I was stuck. I could not get up. I couldn't move. I stayed in the same position until it went away. Like, it was just horrible. So, um, after I used the bathroom, I came back and I was asking her, you know. Actually, I didn't ask. I told her that I was ready for the epidural because they kept asking me when did I want it. So, I told her that I was ready for the epidural and she was in the process of leaving the room anyway. So, she was like, all right, I'm going to page the anesthesiologist and let them know that you're ready or whatever. Uh, she checked me to see how far dilated I was before she left too. I was four centimeters dilated. So I'm gonna say ten minutes flew by, but ten minutes really feel like an hour <laughs> when you having some contractions, y'all. So I'm not gonna lie, I was a little impatient, and I called her to see, you know, what was going on with the epidural, and um, she said that she was gonna call the anesthesiologist and let him know that I was ready. Um, I want to say another 10 to 15 minutes went by and I had asked her, you know, what's the status of the epidural? And she was like, yeah, so he's with another patient right now. I'm going to have to send somebody else to, you know, do the procedure. So the female anesthesiologist, she had came in the room. She read the paperwork or whatever. Um, the nurse had helped me get into position. And um, 
she tried twice and she failed. She couldn't even get the needle in my back. So she was poking me for no reason. Um, so yeah, I was irritated, y'all. It was horrible. As she was getting ready to try for the third time to put the needle in my back, the nurse was giving me this medicine uh, that would take the edge off the contractions and it made me, you know, kind of not loopy, but wine drunk. It just made me real mellow. And um, the male anesthesiologist had walked in. So she had um, switched out with him. She was still in the room, but she switched out with him. And he let the medicine kick in before he tried. And when he tried, he fell also. He got the needle in my back, but um, it fell because I was still able to feel the contractions and both of my legs wasn't numb. Only my left leg was going numb. Actually, it wasn't even really numb. It was just tingly and warm. I still felt my contractions. I felt like it was no different. So I was trying to tell him that. And he, for some reason, I don't know what's wrong with this man. He was real prideful. Um, he was just all like, well, you know, you look very different from when I walked in the room. You know, you don't look like you in that much pain. I feel like I did it right. And I'm just like, you didn't do it right. <laughs> I'm still feeling the contraction. So then the male anesthesiologist was trying to convince my husband that I wasn't in a lot of pain. He all like, yeah, man, doesn't she, uh, literally, yeah, man, doesn't she look like, um, she's doing way better than when I first walked in the room. Don't you think it's working? Don't you think she just needs to give it some time? And I'm just like, no, God, please, no, no, no. We gave it time. It's been, uh, 10 minutes. I don't know what's wrong with the 10 minute rule in that hospital, but what the heck? I'm still feeling the same. So he trying to talk to my husband about that. Um, the nurse is talking to the female anesthesiologist. Like, just imagine everybody in the room talking to each other and you just sitting there in pain, just you know, miserable going through it. Yeah, I was highly upset. So at that point, I was like, okay, I need everybody to leave the room so I could just talk to my husband for a minute. At that point, period, okay, everybody left the room so that I could talk to my husband. Like, yes, and I was just telling him, like, I don't know what to do. You know, I feel like I need a new doctor or blah, 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 blah. He felt like I shouldn't keep going through the process, you know, getting poked or whatever. But I needed that epidural, y'all. So, I don't know. We was both distressed. He didn't want to keep seeing me in distress and in pain. And I don't know. Like, that was just something else. So, while we was talking or whatever, my original OB walked in the room. Thank God. Dr. B. She walked through the room and she was like, hey, is everything okay? And I'm telling her everything. I'm like, no, it's not okay. I'm trying to tell him that it didn't work. He not listening to me. I don't know why. I don't nobody want to believe me. The nurse got an attitude because, um, oh yeah, she was having an attitude because first of all, I'm nine months pregnant. You want me to sit crisscross applesauce all while having these strong contractions? Oh, yeah, you need to, like, wait a minute. Let me collect myself. Let me try to relax and get comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Not even comfortable. Just let me get in the correct position that y'all want me to be in without being in so much pain. Like, let me just brace myself. So, um, and she was steady trying to tell me, oh, well, I just feel like you should do it this way or you should just tuck your legs back even farther, uh, which is even more painful. Like, she didn't know what she was talking about. Just talking. Just talking. Anyways, um, so I was telling her to be everything. She literally only said two things. I will never, ever forget it. Don't worry about it. I got you. And she left out the room. So when she left out the room, the male anesthesiologist came back in. Y'all, he had new energy. He had a smile on his face. He was ready to work. He like, okay, let's get this procedure done. Um, you ready? You want me to wait a minute? You know, like, how you want to do this? He started getting his instruments together. He was moving fast, um, letting me know that everything going to be okay. And I got a new nurse to come in. And this nurse, she stuck with me for the rest of the time that I was in there. Um, and yeah, so I got back in a different, no, no, I got back in the position. And this time, um, he did things differently. He was asking me questions. So he was like, do you feel it more to your left? Do you feel it more to your right, to the middle? And for the longest, I kept on saying the left, the left, the left, the left. Um, then finally, I was like, the middle. 
I fucked it in the middle. He was like, great, that's exactly where it's supposed to be. Um, he finished, you know, fixing the catheter to go in my back for the medicine. And I had asked him to stay in the room for a minute so that he could, you know, just until the epidural started working properly, you know? I didn't want to wait again for too long and I just be sitting there miserable. But he was like, yeah, you know, I'm gonna stay here as long as you need me to. I'm not going nowhere. I need to make sure that everything is okay. He is funny, but um, yeah. So he stood there, y'all, and not even a minute later, it kicked in. Both my legs were completely numb. I could not uh, move them. They were warm. I couldn't feel no type of contractions. Them boys went away quick and yeah, that's it. I was chilling. So after that, he had left. Um, the nurse had left. Dr. B had left. And we was really just playing the waiting game all over again. He would come back, you know, anytime I felt like I needed another dose. So um, I want to say around 3 a.m. the next day, which was the 8th, that's when I started feeling the contractions again. But um, I couldn't get another epidural. My epidural was wearing off, though. I told him that I was ready for another dose. She was like, okay, I'll let him know. But he told me that if I was to get it, um, they would have to restart the process all over again. And I was like, okay, I was actually cool with that. But then um, Dr. B had came in and she told me that I couldn't get the epidural because I needed to be able to feel when I was ready to push. She was like, if I couldn't feel that, then I would end up needing a C-section and I really didn't want one. I was trying my best to avoid a C-section. So, um, time went on and I had to just sit there and, you know, um, deal with the pain or whatever. But it wasn't that bad because, you know, the epidural was wearing off. It wasn't completely gone. So, it was, the contractions were slowly starting to feel strong again. At that point, I couldn't go back to sleep. I want to say around 4 o'clock, that's when the nurse started checking my cervix. I remember at 4.45... Um, she had came back and I told her that I really needed to push or at least go to the bathroom because it felt like I needed to go to the bathroom. But she told me that that wasn't poop or nothing. It was just the baby's head. So I'm like, okay. <laughs> Hold on, in my head, this I'm like, okay, all right, you know, like we getting closer or whatever. But she was trying to have me wait another uh, 15 minutes because she came back every 15 minutes. She wanted me to wait another 15 minutes and I'm just like, I really need to do something. I can't just keep sitting here and holding this. I am really feel like I'm about to have to push her out. So then she let me start um, pushing easy. She told me that even if I was to push hard, it's not like the baby was just going to slip out because I'm a first time mom. Oh wait, actually at 5 o'clock when she paged her to come in, she had set the bed back and she had checked my service again. She told me that I was at a 10. So she let me push until Dr. B came. Um, my husband was sitting right next to her, you know, having me just do slow, steady pushes. And then Dr. B had came in and they switched out. My husband was still right there and I was pushing, you know, he was watching her crown. Um, I even felt the baby head, literally I touched her head. When I was pushing, it's like her head kept coming It'll like, you'll see her head and then it'll go back in. Like it wasn't there all the way. So when it got there all the way, that's when my husband had stopped holding my legs from back by her and he came on my side by my shoulders and was holding my legs from there. And that's when the action started for real. And, um, you know, I was pushing whatever. And then I felt the ring of fire, y'all. I felt all of that fire. I felt it all. I really feel like I went natural at that point because what is epidural? What is that? What is really? What is that? When I was pushing, I couldn't even stay on the bed. Like, I was literally, when I hit the ring of fire, I was pushing in the air. All I remember is her head had popped off. I mean, <laughs> oop, it didn't pop off. Her head had popped out. And then her shoulders popped out. And then the doctor pulled her right out of me. I felt so relieved when she did that in that moment. She held the baby up literally up in the air and i was just like ah, oh my gosh like i really did it y'all and i started crying i really couldn't believe that i did that oh my gosh i was just looking at my husband like we really did this they placed her on my chest and she was just crying i'm just like okay you know okay 
you know, she probably was looking at me crazy because I didn't have my wig on. <laughs> I didn't have my wig on because um, right before I felt the ring of fire, it was hot in there. So I'm just like, babe, take my wig off, you know. I'm like, take my wig off. And he took it off. I was in there with my set it off braids, y'all. I, I did not care at all. So um, I had my husband call my mom. I just kept saying, call my mom, call my mom. FaceTimed her. The cord wasn't even cut yet. I just had to have her see her granddaughter, you know, like I really did. I really pushed her out. But yeah, so after that, my husband cut the cord. Oh, that's thick. Uh -huh. Pull back a little bit. Is this the tip again? There we go. That's it. They cleaned her up. He got to do skin to skin with her. And they just left us alone, really. They left us alone. We was chilling. We was real content. You know, cut the lights off. The shades was already down because it was still early. So it was still dark outside anyways. And we all went to sleep. It was just real peaceful. You know, it was, our family was complete. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention when I had pushed her out, they had to fix my uterus, actually. It had moved. I didn't even know that your uterus could do that. She had to put it back in place. They say that I lost some blood. Um... Obviously not enough to really affect me, but yeah, so after that we were good. So yeah, that was my labor and delivery story. Like, comment, and subscribe. Um, definitely leave a comment down below. I want to know, you know, how was your experience? Did you go through anything similar? Um, you know, let me know what you thought of the situation. Just the whole story, period. And definitely subscribe if you're new here. Join the family. Become a family member. And yeah, I'll see you all in my postpartum video.